Hey, good afternoon. Um, what I am working on right now is our classwork from chapter four. It's uploaded um, on Canvas, so I want to make sure that you are aware of, of where that is. Um, what we have first is we are graphing the function f of x equals negative e raised to the negative x power. What I have right here um, in the red graph is my parent function f of x equals e to the x power. And when we are looking at this function right here, my parent function, I want you to realize that our asymptote that, that drives the behavior of this function is y equals zero. It's a horizontal line at y equals zero. Now, we're going to talk about the behavior of this graph and what it does when we um, add the negatives. So, the first thing that I want to talk about is I want to talk about what happens when we put the negative in front of the x, okay? So, the graph that I'm talking about now is f of x equals e to the negative x, e to the negative x. And when we do that, what has happened is this original parent function is reflected across the y-axis. So it looks like this right here. And then it goes up this direction, okay? So this is when we have f of x equals e to the negative x power. Our asymptote for this graph is still y equals zero. So our asymptote for that right there is still y equals zero. Okay, so that is our parent function. Red is our parent function. And this blue color is e to the negative x. Now I am gonna erase the blue. I'm gonna try to keep the red, but I'm gonna erase the blue. And I wanna talk about what happens when we put the negative in front of the e, okay? So now I'm gonna have negative e raised to the x power. And what happens when I do that is it flips across the x-axis. So this point, zero, one, that point goes to zero, negative one. My asymptote is still, y equals zero, and my graph looks like this. So what I've done here is I have um, reflected this graph across my x-axis, um, and my asymptote is still y equals zero. However, what this problem is asking us to do is it's asking us to do both. We are reflecting across the x-axis, and we are reflecting across the y-axis. So we've got negative e raised to the negative x. So I am going to erase this. We are still going to have um, this point right here. Whoops, sorry about that. This point right here, zero, one, that, because we're reflecting it across the x-axis, is gonna be right there at zero negative one. Our asymptote is still gonna be y equals zero. And our graph behaves like that, okay? So this is what happens when the parent function f of x reflects across the x-axis and reflects across the y-axis, okay? reflects across x and y-axis, okay? So that is f of x equals negative e to the negative x power, okay? Let's look at our next graph. Our next graph, we are graphing um, the function f of x equals log of x minus 2 log of x minus 2. Um, exponents and logs are inverses of each other. And so a point to watch is this point right here, 1, 0. Okay, that is a point to watch when we do our movement. 
Now, the only thing that's happening here, so this red, that is our um, f of x equals log of x. That's what's happening there. My asymptote is y, I'm sorry, no, it's not y, it's x equals zero, okay? My asymptote for this is x equals zero. And so this blue line is my asymptote um, for my logarithm, my, my parent function f of x equals log of x. Now, this minus two, the only thing that's happening with this particular function is we are moving it two spaces to the right. And the reason that we're moving it two spaces to the right is that when we have a value that's in parentheses with the x, um, we do the opposite. So minus two, we're gonna move it to the right. If it was plus two, we would move it to the left. So I'm gonna start with this point. That's a point that we wanna watch right there. That one zero, I am gonna move that point two spaces. So I am going to be at three zero. Okay, then my asymptote is also going to move. It's also going to move two spaces. So instead of having an asymptote that is x equals zero, my asymptote is gonna be x equals two. I'm gonna do this asymptote in purple. So there is my asymptote to go with my graph. And the behavior of my graph looks something like that. It would probably be a little bit more like this. There we go, okay? Um, and so that is the graph of f of x equals log of x minus two. It has moved two spaces to the right. That's what has happened here. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. What we have here is we have um, find each of the following without using calculator. So we are gonna take log base five of 125. I want to turn that into an exponent. So I'm gonna say five to what power equals 125, okay? And five to the third power, five times five times five, equals 125. So the answer to this is three. Okay, now our next one is log base two of the cubed root of two. So we're gonna rewrite this as an exponent and we're gonna say two to some power is equal to the cubed root of two. Now I can rewrite the cubed root of two, I can rewrite that as a rational exponent. So I'm gonna remember that this two inside the radical sign is raised to the first power. This number right here in my rational exponent is my numerator. And this number right here, my index is my denominator. So this is going to be written as two to the one third. So the solution to this right here is one third. Two to the one third power equals the cubed root of two. Okay, now let's move on to number five. Number five says convert to an exponential equation exponential equation. So if you remember, this is my base. So my base is the same, so I have a. This k right here is my exponent. So I am raising a to the k power, and this is my answer when it's an exponent. So log base a of q equals k is the same thing as a to the k power equals q. Now our next one says convert to a logarithmic equation. So we're doing the opposite of this. So here, um, my base is four. So I'm gonna rewrite this as log base four. 
This is my index, it's my of, so I'm gonna say log base four of one over 64 equals, and the answer to a log is your exponent. So I have log base four of one over 64 equals negative three. Okay, number seven says find the logarithm using the change of base formula. Um, so the change of base formula, if I have log um, base A of B, and I don't know the terms of log base A, I can do log of B over log of A. Now the log that I've written is base 10, and all of our calculators do log base 10. Um, you certainly could use a different base other than 10, but 10 is very wise to use. Um, you could also use the natural log. You could do the natural log of B um, over the natural log of A, but um, I almost always use um, base 10. So what we would do right here, um, using the change of base formula, I would do log of 24, over log of five, okay? And the answer that we get when we do that is 1.9746. So I wanna make sure that you're putting this in your calculator correctly. Um, remember, we always talk about putting our numerator and our denominator in parentheses. Um, the fraction bar means division. So I'm gonna do parentheses in my calculator. As soon as I hit log, a parenthesis shows up. So I'm gonna do log of 24. I have to close that parenthesis for my 24, then close the parenthesis for my numerator, okay? Then I'm gonna do log in the denominator. I've got my parenthesis for, for the log. I have to close the parenthesis for the five and close it for the denominator. And when I do that, I get 1.9746. If you use the natural log, you would get the same thing. Okay, let's uh, move on to number eight. Number eight says express as a single logarithm and if possible, simplify. So what I have here is I have the sums and differences um, and I want to get to a single logarithm. So what I like to do first is I like to deal with these numbers um, that are in front of my log, okay? The power rule tells me that that is an exponent. So I am going to move this three to the exponent of my x. So I'm gonna have log base b of x to the third. That's gonna be minus log base b of y to the fourth. So I have just moved that four there. And on my last one, I'm moving a one half. So that's log base b of z to the one half. Now, I'm gonna move to a single logarithm. So I've got log base b. My x to the third is gonna be in my numerator. Then because I am subtracting my log base b of y to the fourth, my y to the fourth is gonna be in the denominator. That's the quotient rule, the quotient property that we're dealing with here. Now, sometimes students think this second one should also be in the denominator, but look at this that it's plus. Because that is positive, my z to the one half goes in the numerator. Okay, because it's positive. If it was negative, it would go in the denominator, but it's positive, so it stays in the numerator. Um, now, I would accept this as um, your final answer. That one half means square root. Some students choose to go ahead and write that as the square root of z. So z to the one half is the same thing as the square root of z, and if you choose to write it that way, um, that's completely fine. I would accept either one of those, okay? Now, number nine is asking us to express in terms of sums and differences of logarithms, okay? Express in terms of sums and differences of logarithms. 
Um, so now this one, I am going to break it down. I'm doing the opposite of what I did in, in number eight. Um, the fact that the entire part, you're taking the fourth root of the entire part, probably confuses some students. So what I want you to do is I want you to think of this as the natural log of wr squared, and all of that is raised to the one-fourth power. So this right here can be written as wr squared being raised to the first power, and we're taking the fourth root of all of that. So I can write wr squared to the one-fourth. Then using my properties of exponents, I give that one-fourth to the w and to the r squared. So I have the natural log of w to the one-fourth and r to the one-half. And that's because I would have 2 over 4, and 2 over 4 simplifies to one-half. Okay? Now I can begin to break it up. Now I can begin to break it up. These are being multiplied. And so I would have the natural log of w to the one-fourth power plus the natural log of r to the one-half power. Then my last step, I am going to take my exponents and I'm going to put them in front. So my final answer to this is one-fourth natural log of w plus one-half natural log of r. Okay, now I think we've got about six different equations to solve. Six different equations to solve. So let's take some time and solve some equations. Okay, so number 10 is telling us that the log base 4 of x equals 2. Log base 4 of x equals 2. When I have um, one log on one side of an equation, or one side of the equal sign. What you will likely do is rewrite this as an exponent, okay? You're going to rewrite this as an exponent, okay? And that's how you would solve these. So these are kind of some good notes to, to have as you're studying for your test. So here, my exponent base is going to be 4. It's going to be raised to the second power, and it equals x. And that is something that we can solve. 4 squared is 16, so our x is equal to 16. So when we have one log on one side of the equal sign, we're going to rewrite that as an exponent. Okay? Now, let's look at our next problem. I've got 4 to the power of 2x minus 2 minus 3 equals 61. I'm going to go ahead and move this 3 over. So I'm going to have 4 to the 2x minus 2 equals 64. Okay? When you have an exponent like this, okay, if you can rewrite, if you can rewrite with the same base, that is going to be your better option. If you can rewrite one of the numbers or both of the numbers to where they have the same base, that's going to be the best thing to do to solve the problem. If you can rewrite with the same base, okay, that's what you want to do. Now, you certainly could take the log of both sides. Um, it's not wrong to do that. It is more complicated to do that. Um, so if you can rewrite it with the same base, rewrite it with the same base. So here I've got 4 to the 2x minus 2. 64 can be rewritten as 4 cubed. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So when I have an exponent with the same base, that means my exponents are equal. So I have 2x minus 2 equals 3. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I end up with 2x equals 5. 
I divide both sides by 2, and so my answer is going to be x equals 5 over 2. So my final answer is x equals 5 over 2. Okay? Okay. Let's move to the next one. Here I have log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of x minus 2 equals 3. Okay, so for this one, we want to rewrite as one log on the right side of the equation. Okay, we're going to rewrite this as one log. So I have log base 2 of x times x minus 2 equals 3. Now, this one is similar to our first one, where we have one log on one side of the equal sign. So what we're going to do now is we are going to rewrite this as an exponent. Rewrite as an exponent. Okay, rewrite as an exponent. So I am going to have 2, because that's my base, raised to the third power equals x times x minus 2. Okay, 2 to the third power is 8, and x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Because this is a quadratic, we know it's a quadratic because of that x raised to the second power, so I'm going to set this equal to 0. And I have x squared minus 2x minus 8. And we factor. And when we factor, we get x minus 4 and x plus 2. Okay? So I set each one of those equal to 0 each one equal to 0, and I end up with x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. Now, it's super, super important that we check because we've got to make sure when we check that I don't get a negative number in my index. So this right here has got to be positive, and this right here has got to be positive. So when I plug 4 in, I get log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 4 minus 2 equals 3. And that works because they're positive. So I'm just going to check that off, that it works. However, when I do log base 2 of negative 2, that gives me a negative. So immediately I can throw that one out. I don't have to go any further because I already have a negative. So I can stop doesn't work. Okay? So my only answer to this one is x equals 4. That's my only answer. Okay? Now, we're going to do number 13 pretty much the same way. Pretty much the same way. I have log base 2 of x squared minus 1 minus log base 2 of x minus 1 equals 1. Um, so it, to rewrite that as a single logarithm, I have log base 2, x squared minus 1 is in the numerator, x minus 1 is in the denominator because of that subtraction sign. The addition sign means the two are multiplied together, the subtraction sign means they're divided when I rewrite them as a single logarithm, okay? Now, you might recognize that x squared minus 1 can be factored. So I'm going to do log base 2, and I'm going to factor x plus 1, x minus 1, over x minus 1. Okay, we can cancel out our x minus 1s, and I have log base 2 of x plus 1 equals... 1. Okay? 
at this point, we have a log on one side, so I can rewrite this as an exponent. So I'm gonna have two to the first power equals x plus one, okay? And when I solve that by subtracting one from both sides, I end up with x equals one. Now, we have to check it. And when I go back and check it, x minus one, that's one minus one, that's gonna give me zero. And one, one squared minus one is also gonna give me zero. So you might not know if you can take the log of zero. You might not be sure. And you remember that you can't have zero in a denominator, so that's undefined, but you can have zero inside a square root. So that's okay, that's defined, and you may not remember about log. So plug it in your calculator. Do log of zero and see what happens in your calculator. And when you do that, you will see that it is undefined. So our answer to this one right here is no solution. Okay? Let's go to our next one. And these are the ones that I added on the board because I wanted to make sure that you had um, some access to it and you could look at these um, because those are important to be sure that you have as well. Okay, number 14. Six times two to the t plus five power plus four equals 11. Okay, well the first thing that we need to do is we need to start trying to get this part by itself. Okay, so we need to get that 2 to the t plus 5 by itself. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I'm going to have 2 t plus 5 plus 4. So I'm going to actually subtract 4 from both sides. So that is going to give me equals 7. So I subtracted 4 from both sides. 11 minus 4 is 7. Now I want to get rid of that 6. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 6. So what I have is t to the t, 2, I'm sorry, 2 to the t plus 5 equals 7 over 6. Now, the advice I gave you earlier was if you can rewrite 7 over 6 in terms of 2, you want to do that. That makes it easier. But we can't do that here. We can't write 7 over 6 as 2 to some power. So, we're going to have to take the log of both sides. And make it easy on yourself, go ahead and take log base 10. Okay, so I'm going to do log base 10 of 2t plus 5 equals log of 7 over 6. Okay, my next step is to take this t plus 5 and put it in front of my log. That's the power rule. So I'm gonna have t plus five times log of two equals log of seven over six. Now, if you're gonna make a mistake, this is where you're gonna make it, okay? So we have to be careful. I'm gonna put a little star right here. This is mistake alert. So if I had t plus five times two, what would I do with this two? What would I do with the two on the outside of the binomial t plus five? And I hope you're thinking, well, Alicia, I would need to distribute that. Even though it's on the opposite side that we're used to seeing, that two still has to be distributed to the t and the five. And that is exactly what has to happen with our log of two. I've got to multiply log of two times t and five. So I'm gonna have t log of two plus five log of two equals log of seven over six. Okay, now I'm gonna rewrite this at the top because we still have um, several steps. So I have t log of two plus five log of two equals log of seven over six, okay? Now, 
if I had 2t minus 5 equals 4, my, or let me do 2t plus 5 equals 4, what I would do to solve this problem is I would subtract 5 to both sides. Now, in my log problem, I'm trying to get that t by itself. So I am going to subtract this from both sides. This is just a number. It's 5 times log of 2. I can get a numerical value for log of 2, and then I would multiply it times 5. So I am going to subtract 5 log 2 from both sides. 5 log 2. So I get t times log of 2 equals log of 7 over 6 minus 5 log of 2. Okay? Now, just like this problem right here, I would divide to get my x by itself. What I'm going to do up here is divide to get my t by itself. I'm going to divide this side by log of 2, and I'm going to divide this side by log of 2. So my answer, and it's okay if you leave it like this, my answer is log of 7 over 6 minus 5 log of 2 over log of 2. Those are numbers. That is your answer. You can leave it just like this. Okay? If you put it in your calculator, let's talk about keystrokes for your calculator. Okay? I'm always telling you to put parentheses around your numerator and your denominator. And remember that fraction bar means divide. Okay? So these are our keystrokes for our calculator. I am going to put a parentheses to start my numerator. As soon as I hit log, it's going to give me a parentheses. And then I'm going to have 7 divided by 6. I'm going to close the parentheses for the 7 divided by 6. Then I'm going to say minus 5. As soon as I hit log, I'm going to get a parentheses that the 2 goes in. I close the parentheses for the 2, then I have to close the parentheses for the numerator. So I have this inside parentheses, this inside parentheses, and all of this inside parentheses. Okay? Then I hit divide, parentheses for my denominator, log. When I hit log, it gives me a parentheses. I put my 2 in, and then I close it twice for my denominator. And when you do that, you're probably going to be like, ooh, I got a negative number. That's okay. The negative number is correct. Your answer is t is approximately negative 4.778. Okay? And you can put that as your answer, or you can put the exact answer from below. Okay, one more. This one has an E in it. Anytime you see E, you need to start thinking, I'm probably going to use the natural log, and that's LN. Okay, anytime you see E, you probably should be thinking, okay, I'm probably going to do something with the natural log. So, here we go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And I'm going to end up with e to the x power equals 30. Okay? Because I have an e, I'm going to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of e to the x power equals the natural log of 30. Okay? We have a property that tells us the natural log of e to some power simplifies to just that power. So the natural log of e to the x power simplifies to x. So x equals the natural log of 30. And if you leave it as the natural log of 30, then you're fine. Um, you might want to do in your calculator and figure out what the natural log of 30 is. And the natural log of 30 is 3.5. Four, zero, one. And I'll accept either one or both of those as your answer. Okay? 
Good luck with your homework. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. And I will see you soon.